For over two decades, Xterra has brought together some of the world's fittest, toughest, and craftiest endurance athletes for a series of off-road triathlons, races that combine open water swimming, mountain biking, and trail running, and demand skill and tenacity, guile and grit. More than a sport, Xterra is a lifestyle requiring total commitment from the bold and ambitious warriors who want to test themselves against the elements, the terrain, the conditions, and each other in some of the most spectacular natural settings in all of athletics. In this, the 24th season of Xterra Racing, the sports appeal continues to grow. And as more and more professional athletes are drawn to its unique challenges, the stakes are higher and the victories harder to come by. But it's more than just elite triathletes who live and breathe Xterra. For the thousands of age group competitors, training can become a personal mission, and reaching an Xterra finish line represents a major life accomplishment. This series will bring you the stories, the motivations, the frustrations, and the triumphs of the 2019 Xterra World Tour. For episode three, we head to Belgium where on the 8th of June, more than 40 elite Xterra athletes representing a dozen different countries, as well as the top amateur triathletes in Europe, gathered in the city of Namur, home of an iconic 1,000-year-old citadel for a hilly, grueling race. A 1.5-kilometer swim in the Moos River, a 37-kilometer mountain bike through city and forest, and a tough 10-kilometer run around the famous fortress. Francois Carloni of France won in Namur last year despite losing about two minutes on the bike when he had to stop to fix the chain. When I started running, I was uh, one minute behind Théo and uh, maybe 40, 50 seconds in front of uh, Anthony Panier. I was not confident because uh, after that bike I was empty, no power, and, uh, and finally, I don't know how I, I found energy, but uh, I feel slowly better and better, and uh, I catch Théo and I, I keep the, the, the lead until the end. Yeah, it was amazing. Carloni held on to win by 24 seconds, but laments the precious time he lost for celebration due to his post-race dehydration. It was an amazing time to share uh, that win with uh, family, friends. My, my aunt uh, from north of France uh, was there, uh, my cousin also. Xterra Adventures is presented by Tea Tree, eco-minded hair care infused with natural botanicals. Discover the natural magic of Tea Tree. The Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau. Visit gohawaii.com slash Maui. This segment is brought to you by Tea Tree by Paul Mitchell. Francois Carloni's triathlon success is especially impressive because, unlike most elites, he works full-time, logging 45 hours a week at a hardware store he opened seven years ago. I wake up at 7 in the morning, around 7, because I used to postpone my wake up uh, every morning, and uh, I have a breakfast. Around 8, I leave uh, my house and it takes me around 20 minutes to, to go to work. I open the shop at 8.30 every morning. I work in the shop all the morning and then around 12.30 I eat something quickly and I start training. When I finish training uh, at work, I quickly eat something in my office with my computer. It's a good time for me to check emails and uh, eat and work. 
and, uh, and then I work a full day again. In the end of the day, uh, I close the shop at 7 and uh, I start another training session. Sometimes I go for a short run and sometimes I go back to Fréjus where I live for a swimming session. I start uh, usually swimming at 8 in the evening, so from 8 to 9, and uh, I go back home around 9.30. My wife swims with me, she, she runs also sometime with me, so we share some session together. Every swimming session, Tuesday uh, and Thursday, together, and then we go back together and we start cooking around 9.30. So we never go to, to our bed before 11. It's not easy to do both work and train and be competitive uh, for racing. Uh, I'm not a perfect man and uh, I try to do my best. Sometimes I'm tired and I know it's normal. The only thing I can regret is uh, the free time I don't have with my wife. In 2008, when Francois first qualified for the Xterra World Championships as an amateur, he invited Chloe, then his girlfriend, to travel to Maui with him. I don't know if it helps me, but I won Maui, and uh, we shared that time together. We fell in love, completely in love, and uh, after that we decided to live together, so she, she left uh, east of France, and she, she came to south of France to, to live with me. With Chloe's support and a packed training schedule, this hardware store owner is developing all the tools he needs to repeat as European Tour Champion. Because I come from mountain bike, I feel very confident uh, on my bike. But since uh, maybe two or three years now, I start to be a, a real triathlete. My level on the bike were going slowly down, but I swim better and I run better. So I can say I'm a proper triathlete right now. The defending champion arrived in Belgium with plenty of support. I like the Xterra spirit. Xterra is a big family. I like to travel around the world and meet people, meet different community. I like because we are all competitors but only during the race. Before or after, it's always a good time to see each other, spend time in a restaurant, go for a ride together, or just spend time together. The camaraderie among the Xterra community is suspended when race day dawns, and it's every triathlete for himself. High winds made for a strong current against the swimmers on the way out, and with them on the way home. For the men, Dutch athlete Victor Gran led the field out of the water, followed closely by Carl Shaw of France and Max Sasserath of Germany. Another 80 seconds back were Carloni, Frenchman Artur Serrier, the Xterra Greece champion, and home crowd favorite Yurai Luxem of Belgium. Swim usually for me it's a difficult, uh, the most difficult discipline, but. This time I, I really had a, a strong swim. I, I, I had a good start. I was beside a, another Belgian athlete I, I know very well. Only on the first buoy, I, I was stuck in the, in the buoy in some uh, ropes and I lost the pack I was in, but I managed to close the gap and uh, it was good to be back in that group. In the women's race, Nicole Walters, a 30-year-old English woman, conquered the strong current and finished the swim in 21 minutes and 46 seconds more than two minutes clear of the field. Seventh out of the water and nearly four minutes behind Walters was the defending champion, Morgan Rieu of France. The stage was set for a scintillating showdown on the mountain bike. This segment is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. Steadily moving up during the bike was Mandy Damikins, a 34-year-old Belgian who competes as an age grouper with an eye to moving up into the elite ranks. As a sports instructor at the Royal Military School in Brussels, Damikins coaches officer candidates 
to achieve the fitness standards they must meet to graduate. It's a job that meshes well with her own athletic goals, as she can train with her colleagues and students at the Academy's facilities. 15 years ago, the former cyclist and cross-country runner discovered she was a good fit for triathlon, once she adopted a sink or swim mindset about the sport's other discipline. I started triathlon exactly at the age of 19 because the army and my instructor at the time told me, listen, you run well, you run well, you have to represent Belgium in Germany. I believe in you. I told him, but I don't know how to swim. He said, no worries, it will be fine. So comes the first triathlon at the age of 19. 400 meters of swimming, 20 kilometers on the bike, and 5 kilometers running. I came out of the water last and overtook my competitors one by one at the other two legs. That strategy, survive the swim, and then move up throughout the bike and the run, has become her hallmark. And she employed it to perfection at this race last year when she took first place in the women's 30 to 34 division. On the bike, I realized that I was catching up with my competitors one after the other, and the running part runs just as well, but during the race I am not aware of my place. I did not know that at the level I was the first among the amateurs. I discovered this while crossing the finish line. It was quite exceptional a sensation to cross that line, and what is more, in Namur. En plus à Namur. As thrilling as her personal victory was in 2018, Damakins derives as much satisfaction from helping others improve as she does from her own achievements. So, the point that attracts me the most and really interests me in my job is really to see these people progress and to see young people who thrive in the sport. They have taken up a taste and pleasure to play sports. This is really what I like to see in the students we have in our classes. On this day in Namur, Damakins was true to form, rolling on the mountain bike after a challenging swim. About swimming, again, as I say every time, it's really not my thing. Here, the current was very strong because of the wind and more, so there were a lot of strokes that were lost. In short, I did my best, I did my swimming part in 26 minutes, which for me is still okay, but I was really in a hurry to get out of the water happy to get out. So about the bike, it was great for me, great sensation as the legs turned really well. I overtook the girls one by one. Meanwhile, among the elites, Uri Luxem, the home crowd favorite, was turning in the second fastest bike split of the day, moving into the lead. The bike was uh, awesome with all the spectators here in this arena, riding up the Citadel, such a scenic place to ride. I was uh, with uh, Francois Carloni out of the water and we rode uh, the first part together and catched uh, Felipe Rinaldi and we could ride the whole race uh, with three of us. So it was a, a good uh, a group to, to get in a good position for the run. Luxem was riding the momentum of the local support. But Carloni, the defending champ, was suffering. I think uh, I pushed too hard on the bike. I knew I was pushing too hard, uh, but I tried because I won last year and uh, I just won a race for the podium. But uh, finally, after one and a half lap, uh, I was completely off. <laughs> there were no such complications for Morgan Ryu in the women's race. Early in the first lap of the bike, the defending champion erased the four minute deficit she took out of the swim and rode to a commanding lead. Her overall bike time of one hour, 55 minutes was the fastest of the day. It was quite surprising for me to be at uh, the first position just after one loop of the bike. But I, I was confident that I wanted to, to have a larger advance at the end of, uh, of the bike to be more relaxed on, uh, on the run, even if it's my specialty. We never know how we will be on the run, so I prefer to push hard on bike. At the front of the men's race, Luxem came into transition two with Filippo Rinaldi of Italy. And the Belgian sensation knew he had to dig deep. 
the run. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the legs were already destroyed, and then you think, oh, I, I have to run here. <laughs> but yeah, it starts with the downhill, so that's something to to get loose of these these mountain bike legs and uh, to to get into a rhythm. But the first lap was uh, was difficult for me. We, I was looking to yeah, Rinaldi, what will he do? I was waiting, but then I heard. Um, some people say, yeah, there's coming someone from the back, like Arthur Serrier. And the second lap, I just said to myself, come on, go. It's now the time, now the moment. <laughs> just try whatever is in the legs. And yeah, I kept uh, the first place. Though a hard charging Arthur Serrier of France turned in the fastest run split of the day to move into second place, Luxem held on for the victory. The third Xterra World Tour win of his career and one he could celebrate with his young son. If there was one race I wanted to win, then it was this one before of a home crowd. Um, I think there were like 50 people uh, coming for me and just to give them like such a, a battle until the end and then get away with the win that's uh, magical. There was no repeat magic for the defending champ, Francois Carloni, who faded to 12th place, more than eight minutes behind the winner. When I started running, uh, I knew I was not in a good position and in a good shape also. So uh, I knew my, my, my race was over and I started to think, okay, just race for the top 10, just to, to finish in a good position. And uh, my stomach was bad also, I uh, had some problem, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, it was really hard. I give all my best. Uh, once I, I think about, don't finish the race, I wanted to stop, but too many people were there, like support me, the family, friends, people around. And I thought, okay, if I don't finish, it will be very bad for me. So finally, I just continue and uh, I finish in 12th position, happy to cross the line, and uh, now let's go for party. Xterra Adventures is presented by the Hawaiian Islands. Visit GoHawaii.com, Hawaii's official tourism site. Xterra, racing and apparel for your active lifestyle. Visit XterraPlanet.com. For the women's defending champion, Morgan Ryu, the run amounted to a 10 kilometer victory lap as the French woman lay down the fastest run of the day, 47 minutes and 55 seconds, to win by an incredible nine minutes over second place finisher Mathilde Bozan of Italy. I'm very happy for uh, the, win, uh, the win today because I uh, already won last year in Belgium. So to do it uh, a second time is uh, really, uh, really good. And Mauro, I won also two, years, two weeks ago in Italy. So uh, I think yeah, I'm in a good shape now and uh, uh, it's, it's crazy yeah, to win again. Nicole Walters, the leader out of the swim, finished in seventh place, while Mandy Damakins repeated as an age group champion in a time that would have placed her sixth among the elites. Damakin's result was good enough to earn her a spot in the professional race at Xterra France the following month. In her first time competing head-to-head -head against pros, she placed 12th of 14 women, a promising start to her elite career. I felt really good throughout. I am very happy with my performance. I think I still have a lot to learn at the technical downhill level compared to the professionals. I really saw where I have failed, but for the rest, I am happy. When I crossed the line, as always, it was exceptional because there is everyone who knows me and encourages me at the top. Two months ago I was in Taiwan and New Zealand and now I'm in Belgium, not far from Paris, but it was, it's a, a beautiful place with, uh, with cheering people and uh, with some crazy uh, uh, yeah, cheers and it's, it's beautiful here. 
It's hard to say because I like many extra, like Scano, Belgium, France, Maui. But if I have to choose one, I would probably say Belgium because of the ambience and the good memories I had. Namur is a, is a great place for an Xterra because you have like the three things. That is the city, the citadel and the forest. And the combination of these three things uh, makes it a, a magical place to race also with the citadel to finish with the stairs and it's like an arena and that feels uh, <laughs> comes into your body like adrenaline. Coming up in the next episode, the 2019 Xterra World Tour heads to France in the gorgeous Greater East region, where among those tackling the famously challenging course are a Polish elite who brings spunk and style to Xterra, and a French father who draws inspiration from his young son. All that and more next time on Xterra Adventures. Yeah.